there are plenty of people who are charismatic and passionate about things, but the most important piece to me is using the charisma, using the passion to benefit and help others. Combining passion with purpose is what James Scoofus is all about. He's passionate about many things, like veterans, the elderly, the threat of zombie properties, one-ticket railway service to Manhattan, education, curbing curious Joel, infrastructure investment, and inflated property taxes. The American dream, save up your money to buy a nice home. You are penalized for that under New York's property tax system. If you're a middle class family, you stash away a little bit of money each month into your savings account to try and buy a nice home. Now that you're on a nice home, a nice property, uh, you need to pay more property tax because you did the right thing and saved your money. Even though your paycheck is the same as what you were making in your not as nice home that you just moved from. I am a big proponent of completely doing away with property taxes and moving to an income-based system like many states have. This is this is not a foreign concept. In fact, New York City has an income tax that primarily funds their schools. I think that's what we should be looking to do statewide. One of the great things we did in this year's budget that I led the fight on the, in the assembly was freezing SUNY tuition. For the past number of years, I've had a bill to make SUNY and CUNY tuition free. That's where I think it ought to be, but at a minimum, we ought to be decreasing the cost of college. So that will certainly continue to be a top priority of mine. I am and continue to be one of the few, especially at this level, elected officials who uh, is not afraid to take on Curious Joel's leaders. Last year, I introduced and against everyone's odds passed a bill that would have implemented significantly more scrutiny into the annexation uh, that Curious Joel is pursuing. Um, unfortunately, the governor vetoed the bill over my and, and many, many people's objections. Um, but even just now, I've reintroduced the bill, I'm pushing it again, and I intend to, to deliver it back to the governor. I think that it's incumbent upon uh, elected officials to, if there is a, a loophole, if there is uh, abuse going on to close that loophole and to prevent that abuse by changing the law. As we speak, Route 207, which is basically Main Street going through Goshen, is being revitalized. I secured $3 million last year for that project, which was long overdue. We got over $100 million for the Exit 131 interchange, Route 17, Route 6, Route 32, and the Thruway 87. As anyone knows who drives through that area on a weekend, holiday, peak shopping times, it is an unmitigated nightmare. The districts that I represent here in Orange and North Rockland have seen during my time a significant increase in state aid. Uh, I go to bat for them and you know I'm a product of public education. I went to Monroe Woodbury. I know what it means to get an excellent education uh, but in order for districts to have programs and have small class sizes uh, and extracurriculars and after school, they need the resources to be able to do those things. And that's why I make sure every day, every budget that comes around each year, that I fight to make sure they get every dollar that they can get. And over the past four years, they have seen a significant increase in state aid, which is a great thing. Paid family leave, I'm very proud of. We enacted this year. The United States still is one of three that does not have some version of paid family leave. Thankfully, New York is now not part of that list. There's much more that needs to be done. Um, you know, we have to do a lot more with ethics here in New York State. I am hopeful that before we head out for break, we will accomplish uh, at a minimum, bare minimum, pension forfeiture so that uh, corrupt elected officials and politicians don't keep collecting their public pensions while behind bars. I think it's a slap in the face in the first place for an elected official to betray the public's trust and break the law. Uh, it's, it's incomprehensible that they then can go to jail and continue slapping the public in the face from behind bars. These are uh, a sampling of the cards that I've received over almost four years from uh, all the people I've uh, run into, all walks of life that uh, we've tried to help in this office um, or made some kind of impact on. Uh, you know, I, I lay them out here because I'm proud of them. And that's one of the, uh, one of the things that we do here that 
um, usually doesn't get headlines or doesn't get in the press at all, and that is the constituent services uh, aspect of this job. Um, some some things as simple as just cutting the red tape a little bit at some agency, DMV problems, whatever it might be, to uh, more serious issues such as fighting with insurance companies on behalf of a constituent uh, after they've gotten a claim denied um, for a, a necessary medical procedure. I look forward to running for re-election. I think uh, um, I've been able to deliver quite a lot uh, for the district over the past four years. I want to keep delivering more.